it really boils down to who we are as a people. You know, de Tocqueville said that America is great because America is good. When America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. So if we want to make America great again, then maybe we ought to check our own moral compass a little bit more. For those of you that don't know, that haven't read the Bible, King David in Israel, he went out and he saw somebody's wife bathing. Her name was Bathsheba. He wanted her for his own. So he had her for his own as the king. And then he found out who her husband was and he sent him out to the front lines to get killed. Uriah the Hittite. So he thinks he's gotten away with this. He takes Bathsheba for his wife. She's pregnant. They're all very happy and moving on after, after he murdered her husband. But anyways, Nathan goes to King David and he tells him this story about how there was this very rich man who had all of the sheep he ever needed, everything he ever wanted. And there was another man who was very poor and his family had one lamb that they all loved very deeply. The rich man has a friend come into town and he wants to have a feast for him. So rather than going out and getting one of his many sheep, he goes to the poor man, he takes their lamb, he slaughters it, and he feeds it to his friend. David at that point is absolutely furious and he demands that they bring this man before him to face the king's justice. And Nathan points at him and he says, you are the man to the king. Now, King David could have taken two different paths at that point. He took the path, according to the story, to repent right then and there. He knew that he was wrong. He knew that he'd sinned. He begged for forgiveness. And Nathan said, well, your life will be spared but God's going to take your son. So that's what God did. So when David then went to comfort Bathsheba over the loss of that son, they conceived another son. And that son became Solomon. And here's, here's a lesson here, right? Is that wisdom is often gotten through pain, sorrow, suffering. And when you look at Solomon, he was known to be wise, right? You're telling me that he never heard the story of how he was conceived? You're telling me that David never confessed to his son of his sins? You're telling me that that didn't lead to a little bit of wisdom? So my attitude is this. I kind of framed it with one of my own stories. Not long ago, I reached out to a one-time lover, a younger woman I met some years ago, a beautiful soul who wears rich brown skin and stares intently into the future with eyes that were born from the warm morning sunlight. She gave me one of the most unforgettable affairs in my life. Of course, there's more to this story. I'm not going to get into that right here. But the point is, I spoke to her not long ago, and she encouraged me, as the degenerate, free-range journalist that I am, to study the Bible more. She said judgment is coming. She gave me that warning. But I'm not so certain she's wrong because when I look around the world, all the fingers are pointed in the wrong direction. So, if you wanna know what you can do to change the world, you wanna be looking around at this person, you wanna point the finger over at that person, you wanna blame Biden, you wanna blame Trump, start blaming yourself. Make yourself a better person, because you are the man. You know, that I said personal responsibility. I thought that could have also wrapped that up, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no.